Okay. I'm laughing because, by all accounts, like, yesterday really was a great day. But my low is for literally, like, the most ridiculous reason ever. Basically, um, after my family and I got back for dinner, we hung out at their place for a while. And literally while watching TV, we all fell asleep. I'm not kidding, we all fell asleep. It was actually kind of hilarious now that I think about it. I didn't wind up leaving my folks' place until, like, 10 o'clock at night. Although it's weird because um, I'm watching TV with my mom and uh, her clock is like kind of weird. Like it's very far ahead so she can get to, uh, I was in the room by the way with watching TV. We like different, everyone in our house likes different things, no judge. Anyway, um, so we're watching TV and I look, it's already 10 o'clock. I'm like, oh wait, it's only, because she, again, she wants to make sure she gets to work as early as possible. So she has her clock very far ahead, but it really freaked me out. Like, whoa. So yeah, my low, I got back super late, but you know what? Even though I was asleep for a good majority of it, for a good, actually more of a good chunk, it was, you know, I was in my family church. I had a wonderful evening last night, fill with family time, and that is definitely my high. And uh, my act of kindness, I got a couple cupcakes and a couple macarons from the Good people over at Peas Macarons. They are awesome. I think we had the cupcakes last night, but uh, we're saving the max for um, for today because uh, we're actually celebrating my brother's birthday today. So I can't wait for that. Good morning. Happy Sunday, everyone. I have a new episode of Amphibia to talk about. So let's get started with Mother Ohm and, of course, Grimes Pupil. So basically, um, this episode picks up where the last one left off, where Anne, Sasha, Sprig, Ivy, or Sprig, Polly, see you, Sprig, Polly, and Hop Hop are all going to, um, to see Mother Own. And throughout this episode, this is really more of a Hop Hop centric episode because, you know, he is getting kind of old and, you know, he has, you know, a bum knee, a bum back, you know, stuff like that. And it turns out when they meet Mother Ohm, she has similar problems as well. She tends to, you know, forget things. So, to help her remember what the prophecy is supposed to be, Anne, Sasha, Sprig, and Polly go inside Mother Ohm's head via her ear to put on some memory cream on her brain Again, this is crazy, I'm not gonna lie. And it's always so funny how Sasha was just reacting to, like all the gross stuff, like earwax, and they felt him to snot at one point. Oh man. And the ending, I'll get to that in a second. So all throughout the episode, it turns out, after all that work, it turns out Mother Ohm still can't quite remember what um what the prophecy was, and then I was like, well, normally if I write, normally if I forget something, I write it down. And then it turns out Mother Ohm wrote it on the ceiling. And this was legit the moment that every fan of Amphibia was waiting for. The prophecy, the prophecy that like has been hyped up for ever and ever and ever. And I don't, obviously, I, mean, I don't remember the prophecy all by heart, obviously, but the gist of it is, as pretty much Everyone predicted, and Sasha and Marcy are the three chosen ones destined to wield the power to save not just Amphibia, but all worlds. As when it comes to the Calamity Box, there are two factions. You have, you know, creatures like the Ohms who, you know, just wanted to leave its power alone, as they should have. And then you had conquerors like again, King Andreas, who, you know, wanted to conquer other worlds. Eventually, they created some unnatural being, which I think is the entity that now possesses Marcy. Thus, we get Darcy. So, it turns out that as long as one of them has a shred of power from the gems, a la Anne has the power of the blue gem, 
she can get the power of the other two gems, give them to Sasha and Marcy, and then they can save all worlds. Pretty simple when you think about it. And then the episode ends because everyone's all completely a mess. And then uh, Mother was like, if you can give us some water, of course we can. So she gets mouthwash and spits on them, and that's the end of the episode. Oh, that was great. That was hilarious. Now, um, the second episode is uh, Grimes' Pupil, where with the war on the horizon, they want to get as many, you know, so the, the resistance wants to get as many soldiers as they can. So they think that they should form an alliance with the Toad Army, you know, Frog Army and Toad Army. But an um, ongoing uh, narrative in Amphibia has been that, you know, frogs and toads don't get along. You know, frogs are typically like, you know, smaller, more fragile, and toads are, you know, big and bulkier. And, you know, they, because they think they're bigger, they think they're better too. Obviously, who wouldn't think that? And so, the leader of the Toad Army is actually Grime's sister. And originally, Anne and Sasha had Grime and Sprig, you know, meet up to go meet, you know, Grime's sister. And then Anne's like, Grime and Sprig have been at odds with each other ever since Sprig beat Grime in a duel back in Utopia. Oh no. So basically, uh, Sprig spills the beans of how he beat Grime to his sister. And, you know, Grime challenges her sister to, his sister to a, um, uh, you know, one of those combat type situations. But Grime's sister can pick whoever she wants. So she picks Sprig. Basically this whole episode is just a funny 11 minutes of Sprig and Grime trying to get along. And eventually they do, because it turns out like they team up to fight these, um, I think they were called uh, high venus, like half hyena, half like bee or something. And it turns out that Sprig can actually move very fast. He's very agile. And with his slingshot, he's very accurate at what he does. Meanwhile, Grime, with his brute strength and ability to induce, you know, self-induce rage, you know, he has a lot of power. So Sprig and Grime bond over that fight, and so they work together to think what would be a unique fighting style for Sprig. So the fight begins and Sprig sort of has a Grime sister on the ropes, but then uh, you know, Grime's sister has a Sprig and a bear hug. And then Sprig remembers, if you can induce rage for yourself, it's a powerful weapon. So Sprig's like, Rah! and then like, like, this isn't fighting, this isn't frog style or toad style. I was like, no. It's frog and toad style, and spring wins. That was actually really cool. Okay. And then the episode ends with, because uh, Grime's sister made fun of Grime earlier. So Grime's like, you got beat by frog, oh, you got And then Grime's just like, bump. And then knocks Grime out. I was like, okay, we'll see you when the war starts. End of the episode. Uh, this was good. Honestly, like, let's, let's be honest, the finale is going to be nothing but emotions and heartbreak so honestly you need some episodes like this to you know move the story along but also provide some very good humor and i would like to think that this episode did that extremely well so now we just wait for you know the next episode to um to happen whenever that may be well that's actually uh next week but yeah so I guess my thoughts on this episode overall are, you know, this episode was great. It was funny. It was funny when it needed to be. It was smart when it needed to be, you know, and to tell you some lessons that just because you may be on the elderly side doesn't mean, you know, you can't do anything. And sometimes when you work together with someone that you're not, you know, friends with, it turns out you can actually get a lot accomplished. It's actually a really smart lesson to teach kids. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to when um, the next week's episode, because it's going to be good. Actually, pretty much everything up until, like, the finale is going to be really, really good. I can't wait. I'm, like, super duper excited about this, I'm not going to lie. Of course, while I'm waiting, there are a few other things I can be very excited about, like 
chapter 1046 of One Piece. That's going to, you know, be published today. Can't wait to read it tomorrow, obviously, for the reaction, because that's what I do. <laughs> but the thing I'm looking forward to most is, you know, we're celebrating my brother's birthday. Now, originally, my plan was, because I have a gift for my brother, and I was going to give him this card and his gift on his actual birthday, which is Wednesday, April 13th. Fun fact, April 13th is also the birthday of one of my all-time favorite voiceover actors, Colin Klingbeard, who is Luffy on One Piece. Right on. So, she's also Urza in Fairy Tale, Reza Hawkeye in Full Metal Alchemist and Full Metal Alchemist Brothers. She, she's done a lot of stuff. She, she is awesome. Through and through. Anyway, so, my brothers, we're celebrating my brother's birthday today, and... Luckily, the gift that I had ready could be ready in a day because a very dear friend of mine who owns the E. Oliver Candle Company can make candles essentially within a day. In fact, she actually had the candle I was looking for. She just needed to print out the label and I'll go pick it up today. And then I'll give it to my brother later. That is awesome. Man, seriously, like, if you've never heard of E. Oliver Candle Company, go check them out. They're awesome. Their scents for candles are amazing. I mean, I talked about them before. I mean, I smelled their banana nut bread candle before. French vanilla was out. I mean, French vanilla is French vanilla. French vanilla is always near to be good. That's what we call a, sh that's what we in the business call a short thing. Anyway, um, so today we're celebrating my brother's birthday and it turns out because originally my mom was going to make like steaks, which that is a mom food I do have to talk about at some point. But the last minute, mom decided she was going to change her mind and we're going to be having a turkey dinner. Okay. <laughs> I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, here's the thing. I love steak and technically, like steak compared to like a turkey leg steak is better. But if it's a turkey dinner, as opposed to just like one steak, yeah, the turkey dinner, turkey dinner trumps it. So that's how, that's how, uh, that's how I call it. And I've talked about my mom making turkey dinner a bunch of times on here. I'll keep this brief. You know, she makes turkey. She makes her own stuffing, mashed potatoes. She's probably making a salad. I'm sure we're probably gonna have one, be one other vegetable. And I'm also sure she's gonna be making um like those ready-made dinner rolls that you get from like the in the in the tube, like the Pillsbury kind. Those are always those are always really good. And you know, I can't wait to celebrate my brother who is going to be turning 34 this week. Yep. He's uh, 20 months older than I am. So right now he's 33, I'm 32. He's gonna be turning 34 this week. So there you go. I know the whole 20 months thing because my mom has mentioned that like dozens of times in conversation. Like 20 months apart. The boys are 20 months apart. And my mom's cool like that though, it's fine. But you know, I mean, I never really gave it much thought because sometimes like people hate their birthday simply because like, oh, I don't like getting older. You know, I'm scared about what's gonna happen to me and stuff like that. Or, some people just hate when, what time of year their birthday is because they just simply don't like that time of year. Me personally, I never really gave it that much thought. I mean, for those of you who don't already know, my birthday is December 28th. I am a December baby. I was actually born in 1989, so literally three days before the 80s were over. So, there you go. And... I do remember I would scream when people were saying happy birthday to me. But as I got older, I'm like, it didn't really occur to me, like, wait, my birthday is right after Christmas and pretty much, actually it is, 100% of the time, I'm off of school. My birthday rocks! You know, I've had some, I've had some pretty sweet birthdays. I'm not gonna lie. So, and my brothers had some sweet birthdays too, and today will be just as, just as much so. Although last year, and this was actually, a few months ago, this was kind of like an ongoing controversy, 
for me doing these videos. Because last year, my mom wanted to make a turkey dinner for my brother. And she pretty much had the last minute, has just wanted the turkey dinner all by himself. And I was very much looking forward to that turkey dinner. So I'm like, okay, mom, you owe me a turkey dinner. And then if you remember a few months ago, it came down to, for my birthday, what I wanted to do. Did I want to go to Lib's Supper Club for my birthday? Or have the turkey dinner? And then I had all of you watching decide what I should do and turkey dinner won by a surprisingly overwhelming margin. I mean, you had a few people promote Lib's, but man, really? I'm, I was actually kind of surprised. I actually know quite a few people would take the Lib's over turkey dinner, but whatever, I mean, I mean, Lips has been around for many, many years. Pretty sure it's, pretty sure it's not going anywhere. And my brother and I actually once had this conversation, a serious conversation, where we both pretty much agreed that, you know, eventually people will come and go and pass on, including our folks. But I know that when that time comes, I'm not gonna be alone because I'll still have family. And my brother, his wife, and my three nephews. And you know, if I ever find the, the right gal, start a family of my own, of course I'll have that. But for now, all I got is all I need. Like, favorite, share, subscribe button, follow me on social media, Twitter, YouTube. I'm going to be helping this video for all of you guys watching. Joe, for the will be a wonderful, wonderful Sunday. Remember, guys, I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to be here to Lindy. I'll see you back. Take care and make good choices. See ya.